Hi family, back for part three of the Miami adventure. Um, so we had left off with the Swiss knife and um, so I was going um, through the airport uh, taking my time to get to security because I really had to um, um, get myself um, back in a peaceful state uh, before I encountered any of um, the mind-controlled order-following TSA agents, Agent Smith in the movie Matrix, anybody? <laughs> um, so um, I saw this sign um, that said Miami Health Tip and it showed a, like a cartoon character with a, a mask over the face and no eyes, no features whatsoever, just a mask over a, a, a blank face, right? Really creepy. Um, and then I walked about another 20 meters and came across another sign and this one said, face mask required. So how did it go from being a health tip to a requirement? Again, legal liability here and I have every intention of contacting Miami airport officials and advising them of their exposure to the liability for endangering the public health. Um, and so, let's see, um, I also saw a sign in the airport by um, J, it's called uh, J.C. Decau. It's um, an Illuminati um, front group uh, for, it's a whole bunch of corporations really, but this is just like one offshoot of it. Uh, it's called J.C. Decau, and they have all the no-bid contracts to clean in the airports, you know, throughout the world. And uh, this sign said thanks to all the Miami airport staff for keeping the airport nice and clean for us. And um, the the um, the verbiage was uh, accompanied by. Um, another image and this one was an image of um, an EKG with a heart right in front of superimposed in front of the EKG and it showed the EKG flatlining so um, that was pretty in your face um, let's see what else um, I walked past a man in military uniform who was wearing his face mask and he had on these rubber uh, surgical purple surgical gloves and he was interacting with his artificial intelligence device like this with his with his touching the screen with his with his gloves and he was just as usual bent completely over like hovering over this device like in your face your your spine is not erect you're not able to open your crown chakra your corona chakra hello um, and uh, it was pretty scary because, and he didn't look like he was in too good a shape either. He looked kind of um, obese, or at least pretty much overweight. And um, I, I know when I was in the military, we took pride in, you know, being the, the picture of health, you know, and working out all the time and stuff like this. So it was pretty interesting to see how the military has changed. Um, I'm not going to look forward to them protecting us, eh? Um, then I, I couldn't wait any longer. I had to go through the um, millimeter wave machine. Um, well, I didn't have to, but they're going to suggest that I do that. And um, I got to the security checkpoint and told them the same thing. I always say when I go to the security checkpoints is that I don't want to go through your millimeter machine because I don't want my DNA scrambled. And you should probably know that um, TSA staff who stand next to this machine have developed extraordinarily high rates of cancer and at least the Boston TSA Union com communicated um, uh, a potential lawsuit to the owners of this machine, the, the, the company that makes these machines, um, to because they're drawing a link between exposure and cancer. So. Um, um, yeah, I got the typical response, which is, oh, well, then you're going to have to be patted down. So they have this other old-fashioned machine, which detects, you know, just fine. It worked for, you know, 
decades that we've always been going through these other machines to detect if you have a knife or a gun or whatever. Um, but they had that roped off. Basically, no one was allowed to use it. Even if you had TSA pre-tech, you're not allowed to use it. So even if you pay extra to be um, not exposed, you, you have no choice. And so there were like six agents, female agents, that were sitting on the other side of the security checkpoint, and none of them were called to come and frisk me. And um, so after a few minutes, I just politely said again, can one of those agents please come and, and do the search because I have a plane to catch. And um, the last time I did this was in California, and I got all kinds of um, negative feedback for that. I, I, they held me so long that I actually almost missed my flight. Um, but this time they didn't. So they, um, they brought this agent through to do the frisk on me. And, um, you know, and I just told her, I said, you know, these millimeter wave machines are much more dangerous than you realize. And you probably want to look into that because, um, not only are you damaging your own health, but you're subjecting the public. And I know you personally can't be financially viable because you're just following orders, but morally you will be held responsible. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, if we, if we don't understand the laws of gravity and we walk off a cliff, gravity doesn't care that you didn't know, right? So the way the universe works is those that do harm to others have harm come back to them. It's just a boomerang effect. It's just the way it works. So, um, so I got on the plane and um, I picked up the uh, magazine in the seat pocket and, and the whole time, mind you, I did not put on a face mask. Um, and on, in this magazine, I noticed um, oh, all kinds of like stuff to program people into the new normal. So they had this thing called selfies mirror fine art. So they took like the original fine art piece uh, called uh, siblings and called it quarantined siblings. And instead of wearing like a ruffle around her dress, this the one sibling had a roll of toilet paper around her, her neck. Um, the other one... Um, the kiss, it's called the kiss, and everybody's seen this one. It's where the man and the woman are embracing, and there's all these rainbow colors and everything. And she's just got her head tilted back and just, you know, totally accepting this kiss. And they called this one the disinfected kiss, where it was two people with face masks on and maintaining social distance and kissing that way. And oh, and then I saw an ad in that same magazine for a garnish for a drink called Mezcal, M-E-Z-C-A-L. It's a, another demon spirit, Very, it's, it's of the same line as alcohol, which is where we get the word alcohol. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's okay, you know, to just have a, a, a one drink, but like, you know, most people don't do that with Mezcal. It's like tequila, you just do shots and shots of it. So, um, so to accompany this already dark energy, they're suggesting that you um, try their new um, garnish, which is a moth who has a relationship with the, um, like one of the um, flowering cactuses of, of they're pr predominantly in Mexico, but you can find them in other parts like Southern United States and stuff. Um, and this, they said, was um, a larva that they had hand harvested. Woohoo, all right. Hand harvested these larvae, sun dried them, and then blended them with chilies and salts. So they're going to take this sentient creature out of nature and put him or her on a, on a, a sheet out in the sun to be slowly roasted to death. And then they're going to put it in a, in a blender and grind it up with chilies and sea salt. And that's meant to garnish your mezcal. Um, really dark stuff, family. I don't know if, does any of that resonate with you? Or I just I find it really weird. Um, and then um, when I uh, got back uh, on the other side of the veil, back here to Mexico, I just was, you know, doing some research of my own about you know all these medical masks and all this rubber gloves and everything all this non-biodegradable waste that's being generated and i thought well, i'm just curious to see how much 
is, is being generated. And I'll try to include this in the show notes as well so you can see it for yourself. But I this is what I read. In Wuhan, China alone, they had to develop um, a new, uh, an entirely new medical waste plant and 46 different mobile medical waste uh, collection plant kind of thing where they can dispose of, of medical waste. And um, just since, uh, I think it was towards the end of last year, whenever they said the virus outbreak, the virus outbreak happened in Wuhan, just since that time, so what is that, like eight months, that they have generated already in just Wuhan, China, 240 metric tons of medical waste, non-biodegradable medical waste. Um, then in the United States, there was a another report from a medical waste, another Illuminati group um, that has the no bid contract to dispose of medical waste. And um, they operate in the United States, but also all over the world. Not all over the world, but like there's maybe one other contractor that 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 works alongside them. Uh, it, there's no competition in this at all. It's it's like one or two guys, one or two companies doing this whole thing. And they reported. Are you ready for this? I shit you not. Just since the coronavirus outbreak, they have reported collecting and disposing of 54 trillion, trillion with a T, pounds of medical waste, non-biodegradable medical waste that's being thrown into the landfills to destroy Mother Earth. And ye shall know the nature of the tree by the fruit that it bears. Because if we're afraid of a virus, we should look into our environment, our internal environment, making sure that that's clean and healthy, and our external environment. But what do we do instead? create more waste to destroy the environment. Ludicrous, absolutely. I, I, there's no other way to describe it. I'm sorry, just, like you can't explain that to me. That, nope, I don't buy that. So, um, that uh, pretty much concludes um, The Miami adventure and um, the experiences I had along the way and the thoughts that came to my mind and how I chose to perceive um, what was being reflected um, in my reality and uh, I I I hope that that's been a blessing for you to be able to use your own critical thought and um, consider, you know, um, looking at things with a different perspective, um, questioning things. Um, I hope this has been helpful for my family to uh, be encouraged to um, be the one that says, no, I will not comply. I will not obey that which is a lie. I will not lend my actions to this false light. It's like when your actions don't line up with your beliefs, you're gonna have a, a wreck. And if your beliefs are in a system that is pitching to you that you have to do these things for your own health, let's be real clear about that. No one but you has responsibility for your health. I don't need the World Health Organization or the CDC or any of the MDs, more drugs, quacks, telling me what's good for my health and what I should do. 
I know what's good for my health. My health is my responsibility. And that comes down to my diet. What, what, what am I putting in my body? The water, um, the exercise I get, the meditation I do to, to connect with my higher self and light up my chakras and stay energetically. Cause you know, if, if we have a dis-ease in the energetical vibration, then that's going to be manifested in the physical body with a disease. So, um, also to not buy into all the fear porn, um, that just lowers our vibration down to like the lowest level. Um, fear is not a vibration that we're operating in our, we're not operating in our fullest potential when we're in this fear vibration. We're curled up into a fetal position and we're sucking our thumbs and asking for somebody to come and save us. This is the total opposite of what we are intended to do. We're intended to take responsibility for ourselves, for our health, for our mental health, for our physical health, for our emotional health, for our spiritual health. Um, and so with that being said, I would like to um, offer up my solution um, and kind of summarize the solution because the, the solution's been kind of obvious as I go along. Um, it should be pretty obvious, but um, is to um, is for the family to take back their corona, corona, take back their crown. Think for themselves. Stop listening to somebody else's advice. Stop following other people's rules. Do in your heart what you know is true. And don't let your heart be influenced or seized up by fear. Do some research. Find out. You know, when they say, oh, 90,000 cases of coronavirus in the United States. Okay, divide that into the total population and you come up with a number that's something like one in 100,000, maybe, that tested positive. But the tests are yielding false positives at least 50% of the time. So now we can take that number and say that one in a million actually might have the coronavirus. And then we can take the CDC and the World Health Organization statistics, they even admitted it, that 0.26 of those who have the virus actually succumb to it. And that they're elderly and they have pre-existing conditions and compromised immune systems through all the freaking weaponized energy. Um, so now you're talking about like dying of the coronavirus is your chances is probably like one in a trillion maybe I don't I don't know it's it's ridiculous and and like I said even if there was a virus that we should all be running from <clears throat> we shouldn't be running from it we should be confronting it we should be saying why is this environment hosting a virus that is allegedly so deadly perhaps it's because the environment is polluted and maybe instead of adding to the pollution we should refuse to add to the pollution and we should get out there with our trash bags and pick up all the plastic and all the rubber gloves and all the crap that's thrown, the Coke bottles and just everything on the side of the road. Maybe we should do something about these chemtrails being sprayed on us, you know, maybe we should do something about um, the municipal water supply officials allowing industry to dump their all all their toxic waste into the water because everything comes down to the water the water is everything right and so when that is polluted then our internal waters get polluted and then when our internal waters get polluted we are polluted and then everything we project out into the 3d into the manifested physical world is also a reflection of that pollution so I hope that this has been a blessing for your family and it is my honor um, to be of service to Mother Earth and to the human family and to all life on this planet and um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, series and um, 
if you do, please like, subscribe, share. Um, not for my sake, but for the sake of others. Um, it's important. It's important that we understand the battlefield that we're on. It's important that we have critical thinking. And um, until next time, family, thank you so much. I love you. Namaste.